how do we move and become more proactive around that response? What you'll see here is that we're a small but mighty organization, but we're very focused within our project areas around healthcare, around law enforcement, training, technical assistance and guidance, around policy, making systems and laws better in our state to keep victims safer. We do extensive training here at CCADV, not just for advocates, but for all of those other entities that are touching survivors in their various roles. Morning, Laura. Morning, Dr. Vernon. How are you? How are you? I look back over the last 30 years and just statistically how many missed opportunities I had to intervene. We didn't have the tools, um, and that's why I think training is so important. We can screen at a healthcare appointment, whether that's in a surgery center or an OBGYN appointment or even a pediatric appointment, if we can have that conversation and perhaps link that person to resources right in their community, it's impactful. Once we got trained as an office, we all know and we all help each other and so we make the calls for that patient. Regardless of where she engages in our system, she's getting the response that we want. We are all touching survivors at very critical times, and the opportunity to offer them safety is so important. We could not be more proud to be the only state in the nation that is doing lethality assessment entirely across the state. Law enforcement is coming upon the scene of an incident at a really volatile time, um, a very vulnerable time for survivors of violence. Understanding how at risk the victim of violence is at the scene of the incident and in many cases, linking that person to services and help from the scenes. So it's, uh, it's very important that we have them engage with the advocates right there at that moment so they can get some information on safety planning and what the next steps are. 46-year-old Scott Gelatly is charged with murdering his estranged wife. Lori Gelatly's death is Connecticut's sixth murder with apparent connection to domestic violence this year. We didn't know who to reach out to. We, the state police were the only ones. He, he would constantly text and call and holler. We knew he had a shotgun. We didn't really expect it to escalate to what it did. If we had known about Karen, we may have been able to protect her more. It would have been a godsend. Maybe she'd still be alive. Domestic violence homicide, since we've started implementing this program, has been dropping year over year. And the fact that Connecticut is the only state in the nation doing this uh, statewide uh, is huge. What do people need to stay safe? Sometimes it means changing laws. It's no longer legal for someone who is the respondent of a temporary restraining order to have a gun. So they have to turn those guns in um, from the moment the, the order is issued to until they're hearing. The Jackson family was incredibly influential in helping us pass that law. I can think of few organizations uh, that I listen to more carefully than CCADV. They're here uh, to change policy in Connecticut, to protect victims of domestic violence, and to try to change the culture to ensure that people don't become victims of domestic violence. I choose to speak up and not remain silent. How do we reach young men before they start to fall into potentially a cycle of violence? We've trained many of their uh, employees to be mentors around healthy relationships and healthy behaviors. I choose to inspire young men to be advocates against violence towards women. We will be here to do this work, uh, to make systems better, uh, to change laws when necessary, to train advocates around best practice models to be as responsive as they can be, to keep victims safe, to work with law enforcement and healthcare providers. We are here for the long term to keep survivors of violence safe and safer.